I started fishing over 30 years ago, but for at least the first 20 of those years, I made a lot of silly mistakes that caused me to miss a lot of fish and get stressed out for no good reason. These are the top seven mistakes that I made and that I still see others making. Number one, seeing weedy areas as unfishable. These are incredible fishing opportunities for all kinds of fish like bass, pike, muskie, bowfin, even jumbo perch. I used to ignore these completely because I'd always get hung up on plants or I was afraid that I'd never get a fish out of there. But now I see one of these areas and I'm excited to pick up a heavier setup and toss a weedless frog or pitch a jig right into the heaviest cover. The real problem was that I wasn't comfortable with the baits that were appropriate for this type of cover. Now that I've practiced using various weedless baits, I can catch a fish anywhere. Number two, using tackle that's way too heavy. Don't fish for bluegills with a giant catfish rod. Heavy rigs are less fun to use, and heavy setups will drastically decrease your casting distance with small lures. Now if you're fishing around super thick brush or vegetation, you'll have to use a heavier setup for this, even though you might only be catching three to four pound bass. The bottom line is, use a setup that's reasonable for the size of fish that you're catching. If you can only afford one rod, get a medium light or medium power. You can catch just about anything on that. Number three, pointing my rod at the lure while I retrieved it. A fishing rod serves as a shock absorber and bite indicator. If your rod is pointed at the lure and a fish strikes it hard, all of that impact shock is absorbed by the line itself and it can break your line. Keep your rod out at an angle to your bait, which gives you better bite detection, better shock absorption during a hard strike, and it allows for a better hook set too. Your rod should always be bent slightly when retrieving a lure, except during a pause. Number four, buying lures because I saw a video of a pro catching a 12 pound bass in Texas on it. For some reason, I thought if I fished with these lures, a 12 pound bass would magically appear in my local bluegill pond. I've lived in the Midwest all my life, and yes, there have been a few Midwest bass pushing 10 pounds, but the size and types of fish we have here are very different than what you'd find in Texas. The forage is different, the vegetation is different, so don't expect the same results as you see in another part of the country or the world. Talk to a few local anglers or a bait store owner in your area to see what kinds of baits they have success with and learn to use those well. Chances are there are some reliable fish catching baits that you would do well practicing with. Number five, tying terrible knots. When I was a kid, I used my dad's lures every time I went fishing and I tied them on by crossing the line a couple of times and sticking the tag end back through somewhere and calling it good. Eventually, my dad got tired of me coming home without his lure, so he made me sit down and learn how to tie good fishing knots. This, of course, meant fewer lost lures, but also fewer lost fish for me. It's so important to tie a good knot so you don't lose that fish of a lifetime someday. Or if you're trying to catch your very first fish, you certainly don't want it to come off just before you land it. Check out our playlist of quick fishing knot how-to videos to learn a bunch of them. My favorites are the modified uni knot and trialing knot, but all of those knots in the videos are solid knots. Just pick one or two that you can tie quickly and confidently and go with those. Number six, letting the skunk get to you. If you haven't heard this term yet, getting skunked is when you don't catch any fish that day. It stinks all right, but it happens to everyone, not just you. Even if you didn't catch anything, you did get a lot of practice using your lures, improving your casting accuracy, and making other observations that'll help you next time you go out. Take a look at tournament standing sometime and you'll see that even the professionals with their $100,000 boats are also getting skunk sometimes. Number seven, casting the same bait all the time. Fishing different kinds of baits is what allows you to learn new techniques and get better at predicting there when a certain is. bait will work and another will not. When I started fishing, I loved throwing inline spinners all the time. They are amazing for a ton of different species, but they're also notorious for getting hung up on plants and snags. Instead of looking for suitable habitat for casting a spinner, I should have grabbed a different lure instead. I was missing out on a ton of opportunities to learn new lures and catch more fish. On the other hand, I was out fishing for brown trout this spring and spent most of the day trolling crankbaits and casting swimbaits. When I switched to my trusty inline spinner, I caught this monster on the first cast. Inline spinners are still some of my favorite baits, but it's important to get practice with many different types of lures. Do yourself a favor and pick up a handful of lures that are good for a variety of fishing situations. We have all kinds of videos on this channel about different types of lures and how to use them effectively. Learn to use these lures well and then expand to new types of lures later. You'll find that it's a lot of fun to explore new areas and test your abilities with a small number of lures. You'll catch fish that you didn't even know were out there. Good luck and thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.